Are you on the RCR mailing list? Never miss a beat of the news and hard-hitting stories you've come to know and love. Stay in the loop. Visit realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we're going to find out what they thought about the US presidential debate between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. How are you? Uh, yeah, very good, actually. Uh, you know, things are looking up. Excellent. I'm very pleased to hear that. And um, there's one person things are not looking up for, isn't it? Well, yes, that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. Uh, did you watch the debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden? And if you did, or even if you didn't and saw some of the reviews, what are your thoughts on that debate? Well, I'm going to start by telling you a story. When I was a kid, I really enjoyed a story called The Emperor's New Clothes. And it was about this really powerful guy. And, um, you know, he'd obviously done some good in the past. And um, the sycophants and the power brokers convinced him to go on parade in his undies and that he, he was wearing the most magnificent um, garment. And um, it took a child who had no vested interest to say, but mum, he's wearing his undies. And look, I feel exactly the same way. This could be a modern day version of the emperor's new clothes. Now, pretty much if you're a political observer and you've been you know, widely read and just don't take what the mainstream media says is gospel, you probably already knew that Biden was not, you know, the their lift didn't go to the top floor or there's a kangaroo loose in his top paddock, right? It's a couple of, definitely a couple of sandwiches short of a picnic. But Well, dementia is a neurological disease mm. and it doesn't happen um, like a cold. You don't suddenly last week you're okay and this week you've got dementia. It doesn't work like that, and it's a, a long-term cognitive decline. And the power brokers and the sycophants have actually hidden that um, by trying to control the media um, that has covered um, Biden. And like you say, most of us could see that something wasn't right, but still the media and the power brokers and the sycophants were saying, He's the sharpest man in the meeting. He's got a photographic memory. He can, you know, hold the floor and, and um, spout forth for 90 minutes. And clearly he can't. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because aren't the media in on this? Weren't they also the ones that were saying he's as sharp as a tack? You know, his mental acuity is brilliant. He's got a photograph. All the things you've said, that, those are words that have been said by media people. So if you're a, a voter looking at this and thinking over all the years that Joe Biden's the president, he's doing a fantastic bang-up job, and then you saw that 90-minute display of bewilderment, are you going to feel a bit angry at the media and the Democrats for hiding this? It, as you say, it didn't come on suddenly. They've been gaslighting us for years. I 100% agree, and that's why I said this is like the modern version of the Emperor's New Clothes. It took something where people had no vested interest, and I think Tucker Carlson made a comment in one of his um, lectures in Australia where it's like, oh, before before the debate, everything's fine, and, you know, Joe Biden's the greatest thing since sliced butter. But after the debate, it was like all these guys... Oh my God, he's got dementia, and and it was like a, a revelation to them. And I'm thinking they just couldn't hide the secret any longer. After 90 minutes of coverage and people watching what can only be described as classic signs of dementia on their TVs in their living rooms, it can't be hidden anymore. For 90 minutes. For 90 minutes. I mean, the first 10 minutes was excruciating. 90 minutes is torture. Oh, I actually feel sorry for Joe Biden that they fill him full of drugs and trot him out there and get him to say his bit and 
he can clearly tell. I mean, anybody who's had any interaction with people with dementia knows the frustration that the dementia sufferer goes through trying to elucidate their thoughts but can't put all the pieces together and they get frustrated, they get angry, um, and then they get depressed. And and I actually feel sorry for Joe Biden, but the person I hold responsible for this is his wife. She's egging him on. Unbelievable. Listen, she, uh, she's a doctor. He, he is being systematically humiliated, and I feel sorry for him. I am sure that he has some political um, now, and in the past he's done some good things. I'm sure that he has been a great politician, but to see him humbled and and just trotted out like that for 90 minutes, and then to for the um, vast majority, I would say, of the American public who are not really into the politics and for them to see what their president actually is and does and how he conducts himself, I would suggest that a lot of Democrat voters are going to say, oh, my goodness, I just can't bring myself to vote this election. And it might be that Trump wins with a landslide because the uh, Democrat voters just stay home. Well, Olivia said that... If they 25th Amendment him, you know, basically say he's incapable of acting and get rid of him as the president using the 25th Amendment, there's all sorts of constitutional issues with the executive orders that he's signed over the years. And you could well see lawsuits before the Supreme Court in the United States saying, well, when he signed this executive order, what was he the full quid then? Do, do we have an assessment of that? Or, or did it, it doesn't suddenly happen. And there'll be all sorts of no. um, things. It's going to put a whole lot of things into play that were never in play before because the Democrats lied about Joe Biden's frailty. Yes, and I think, you know, the Emperor's New Clothes comes to bear. There are power brokers behind the scenes, the sycophants, um, you know, the talking heads on the media, the media themselves, man, they are guilty and they are culpable. And I firmly believe that for the average um, voter who may not have that much interest in politics and, and just lets it wash over them, if the average voter saw that um, debate, in fact, if they saw any of the debate, they would have not mm. believed their eyes because they have been presented a carefully curated image of the president in 10 or 20 second bursts. And now it's all laid open for the world to see. And it's pretty disturbing, actually. Is there going to be pushback for the media for their complicity in all of this? Well, I think the media are already staggering. And, um, you know, we see the New Zealand media going down the same road. And, and I'm like, Horror well, I shouldn't be horrified. I know that the media in New Zealand are corrupt. I know that they're so left leaning that it's a wonder they don't fall over. But the the problem that I have is if they're going to tell such outrageous lies about a person's competence, what else are they capable of? Well, that's exactly right. And that's what, what I think is happening here is that we're finding out just how duplicitous and dishonest our media are globally, but but in particular in this case in the United States, very duplicitous. And, I mean, there's the thing is the internet is awash with memes and, and some of them have got actual video from CNN talking heads saying how amazing Joe Biden is. Now, I'm not taking anything away from the guy's previous career, but what a humiliating mm. and, and totally undeserved way to end a career. And, and I'm it's sad. I'm not the biggest Joe Biden fan in the world, but I feel that this is subhuman treatment. 
Yeah, it's an ignominious end to what is a, a reasonable career in in uh, in Congress. Anyway, Miles, uh, I've got yeah. uh, Lindley on the phone now, so I better take her call. And thanks for calling to Cam's Buddies, and we'll talk next week. See you later, Cam. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back. Well, where have you been, Cam? Oh, I mean, I my life's not been the same. I know. I, I had a few a few personal issues to deal with um, two weeks ago, and and last week, of course, the station had a little bit of a break for the long, long weekend. So anyway, we're back this week, and we're talking about the U.S. presidential debate with Joe Biden and Donald Trump. What are your thoughts on that? Did you see it? Of course I saw it. I watched it live, uh, all 90 minutes of it. In the aftermath, um, what did I think of it? I have never seen anything like it in my life. Mm. I saw 90 minutes of a demented, rambling mannequin with an A1 voice implant staring into space, yep. getting everything mixed up. Just and, appalling. <clears throat> pardon? It was just appalling. It was the, but, you know, to be fair, I don't know if you sort of watch any of the real stuff um, about, you know, Biden and Trump and all them, but I have watched quite a bit of it, and the only thing I'm shocked about, actually, is that everyone else was shocked, because <clears throat> if we go back to prior to the election, he was nearly as bad as that then, Yep. Um, and he was hidden away, if you remember, he was hidden away. And um, while Trump was doing rallies to 20,000 people plus, uh, Biden only came out once, uh, once in a blue moon to a drive-in sort of situation. Mm. I think COVID was about then. A and he would have six cars of people turn up. And <clears throat> he was... Badly compromised back then. I don't know how he ever won the election, and one can only wonder on that one. Well, we know how they won the election, and they fixed it. Well, I mean, it I mean, was it, unbelievable. It's a deceit on the American public what has gone on, because you're right, in 2020, he didn't campaign much. He was There were jokes that he was campaigning from his basement. Uh, Trump was mm. massive rallies everywhere. And then the Joe Biden wins, and then we almost hear nothing of him except these scripted um, announcements and things like that. Uh, but the, there was always, you know, a, a hint that something was not right there. And uh, but now oh God. We, we can be in no doubt now that there is something not right with Joe Biden. Absolutely, the doubt mm -hmm. has disappeared. Yes, well, I'm just itching to say um, it was obvious all the way through because I've seen clips of him um, trying to give a speech on stage, which he's barely got through that, and he's had teleprompters there, um, and then he's got lost on stage. He's been unable to find his way off the stage. I've seen his wife rush out in a panic and grab him by the elbow and spin him around in the right direction. I've seen him turn around and shake hands with absolutely nobody. Um, I've seen him fall off his bike before it even moved. Yeah. I've seen him I've seen him tripping both up and down the steps to you know, into the plane. Yeah. Um, he has said some absolutely ridiculously incorrect things, even though he's got a teleprompter. You know, yeah. over the last four years, he has said some absolute bloopers that, well, of course, they never get shown on the mainstream media. No. And no. the man that I have seen has had dementia symptoms for the last four years. I can't understand well, why anybody would be surprised. And um, I think one of the guys, and that was on his own side, uh, was asked for a comment after the um, debate, and the um, host said to him, you know, what do you think happened? Do you think they gave Joe Biden, you know, some drugs to help him and it sort of backfired? Drugs, he said, I think he's had a lobotomy. <laughs> well, he was out to lunch, wasn't he? And I don't think 
uh, that the format that CNN used was particularly helpful to him because, you know, Trump was smart enough to realize there was going to be just his head and Joe Biden's head on the screen in a split screen most of the time. And so when Biden was mumbling away and 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 talking nonsensical stuff, um, Trump didn't interrupt him. He didn't say anything. He he just made facial expressions, which everyone could of course see, you know, confused facial expressions. And the one time, you know, the the host said to uh, him, President Trump, what do you think about that? And and Trump said, Well, I have no idea what he just said, and I doubt he does <laughs> either. Right? And and that was a statement of truth. At that point, it, here was Trump. I'm debating an idiot. Uh, you know, a, a function, not even a functional idiot anymore. This guy is out to lunch. Uh, but, uh, but you know, I actually blame his wife. She's a doctor. She must know this. Well, yeah, but she's not, a, she's not a medical doctor. Well, well, she's Dr. Jill Biden. Let's just use that. No, she, she's just a doctor on paper, one of those ones. All oh, right, one of those ones. But she's still, mm, yeah. mm. She, would, she would see him doing the same stuff in the house. Oh, well, she'd have to because, I mean, I don't think he, he he hasn't actually answered questions, you know, at the press conferences for a very long time. You know, if, if he does one at all, he just turns around and sort of stutters off stage, disappears. And um, I understand that he doesn't do any business at all. Is it after about four o'clock in the afternoon or something? I mean, he actually can't go the distance of an eight-hour day. Everybody knows it. Well, we used to, we had a prime minister who used to go home at four o'clock too. Who was yeah. that? Her name was Jacinda Ardern. Oh God, yes. Yep. <clears throat> well, well no. we won't go there. You'll, well, we won't well, go there, Cam. You'll upset me. Yeah, well, it was well known around Parliament, uh, oh. and uh, but of course the media never said anything because you know she was their girl. Well, that's right. Well, the media's been the same with Joe Biden. You know, they have cleverly edited him for the last four years, um, and they've managed to present him as a distinguished gentleman ruling the USA. Um, And it's just, I mean, how has that ever happened? Uh, Why is he there? I'd like you to tell me that. Why is he there? Because he is clearly totally off his face. Mm. But there must be a reason that they want him there. Does he just rubber stamp everything? Yes, 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 yes. Or why is he there? Well, I think the person to ask for that would be Barack Obama. But when we got a hint about this, though, remember when the investigator in the documents case um, for Joe Biden taking documents home and keeping them in his house, he said in his report, in his car. Uh, "Yeah, we won't um, prosecute him because." He um he doesn't remember basic facts and comes across as a bewildered old man. Uh, so we had we had the hints. There was terrible people who were complaining about it at the time. That was terrible that he said those things. But but that was the reality of the situation, and we've now seen that we've had ninety minutes on CNN of a bumbling, fumbling, uh, sad old man uh, in the twilight years of his life, not just his career. And uh, I was talking to Miles just before you, and I said, it's sad. It's sad that he is being embarrassed and ending his career in ignominy, and you have to say that the Democratic handlers and his own wife are the ones that are responsible for this. Yeah, well, I've actually gone beyond the sad and feeling sorry for him um, because, look, at the end of the day, this is one of the most powerful positions in the world, um, it has huge influence over other countries, um, and he is the president. Now, this He's is beyond president. sad and feeling sorry for him. We should be feeling sad and sorry for ourselves, really. Uh, it's not good enough. It's absolutely outrageous, and it's bordering on criminal, in my opinion. Um, he obviously hasn't got the nous to realise the pickle he's in and step down, but as you say, those around him know. So I can only think that they want him there. They don't mind that he's like that. He must just rubber stamp everything or something. Well, There'll th- be a reason. Yeah, I think he's a puppet. And uh, he, he is a puppet. 
Yeah, and and it's not that he rubber stamps him. He's he's the figurehead. But I think what we can see hidden in the background there, really? look very closely. Oh, yes, it's just he's the puppet. The the person with his hand up the puppet is Barack Obama. Is it? Well, it, well, you have a look at it. He always appears with Biden. He was Biden was his uh, uh, vice president. Uh, Barack Obama has stated publicly that you know. Uh, the changes that are needed in society will take longer than uh, one term or even a presidency. Um, it needs intergenerational, and uh, you know they they didn't expect Trump to win in 2016, so they had to fix that in 2020 mm. to get man in to continue on with the program. And the only person with that program and the things that are being said and done uh, is Barack Obama. So you know um, there's you know Occam's Razor. Uh, uh, the statement that uh, in a complex situation, often the simplest explanation is the most uh, truthful explanation. Yes, well, I, I always say that if something seems absolutely outrageous and ridiculous, it's because the intention is to have, have it there for some reason. So what you're saying is that B Barack Obama is using him to continue his great transformation program. Is that what you're saying? I believe so. That's that, that's Olivia's yeah. view as well, and I and um, you know Olivia is a keen observer of politics. Um, I, I tend to agree with her on that. Mm, well, it is credible. It is. All right, Lindley. It's uh, I've got to take the next call. So thank you for calling Cam's buddies, and we'll talk again next week. Yeah, and we'll see you again on uh, what is it September the tenth next debate. Watch <laughs> this space. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Good to have you back. Thank you, Cam, and uh, welcome back. It's, we, I've missed you for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, that's what everybody says. You know, sometimes you got to go away so people can, you know, miss you. No problem at all. Well, I hope, I hope they haven't missed me because it's just I'm just an also ran, but um, I, <laughs> I like listening to you on on the radio on the Thursday. Oh well, mate, you can't uh, you, you can't be that bad because you're one of my buddies. Yeah, I could get with you in person, of course. <laughs> yes, that's right. Hey, uh, did you watch the debate um, between Joe Biden and Donald Trump uh, last Friday? Yeah, I did. I, was, um, I found it very interesting. I thought um, yeah, that Trump was very controlled, and um, I've seen a few later commentaries saying that, that they'd tried to prep um, Biden for which Trump turned up, was it the outlandish Trump that has a go, or was it the controlled Trump? And they were going to have a strategy to bait him, to make him go from controlled to outlandish if they could. But um, of course, to, to be able to do that, you have to turn up. And um, I don't think Joe turned up. I just looked and I'm thinking, if this is what a week, week off gives you, um, and then he's all go, um, and, and it, he just looked like a sad old man. And as everyone has been saying on uh, social media, um, it's Jill Biden having um, elder abuse of this poor guy. And yeah, um, I saw a video. I think it's interesting. Some guy ring, ringing, reporting, we're reporting elder abuse. So I like to report elder abuse. I've seen a, a person. Um, you know, being abused, and, and the abuser is a Dr. Jill Biden. It's just, it's first and mm -hmm. something like, what? But, yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. Well, I think there, there could be a con going on here. I think the Dems probably have figured out that Jill and the Biden plan won't allow Joe to, to not have a go at running, so I think they might have let him have a go and fall flat on his face. So the the America that's been conned by the local media saying nothing to see here, he's all good, he's as smart as ever. Whenever I've Chapter discussed tap. anything with him, it's the yeah. sharpest man in the room. Yeah. All these sorts of things. And um, then when they just might have been thinking, okay, we want to replace him with some fool like Gavin Newsom or something, who's been doing a lot of campaigning for the last year on how he could be the guy. And then he, if you listen to some of the words he said when he was interviewed, oh, I'm behind um, Biden all the way, you know, I'll do whatever he is required kind of thing. He's not saying I won't go and take him on. 
it was more, oh, oh, it's like the bullshit words that they put around things so that they can't be called out on a lie. Mm. And right. I think it's, um, it's interesting when people say, because if you put up uh, who lied at the debate, if you, if you happen to search that, it's yeah. everybody talking about how Trump lied and Trump's lies. I said, even, even next, next buddy on, if you have um, Jack on, he's going to go on and on about Trump's lies. But when Trump says something like, I believe I didn't lose the last election. Now, if he believes that, it's not a lie. Whether he won or not is not debated here. It's if he believes he wasn't one, then that's not a lie. And when you have things that, that no one even mentions that Biden says that there was no death in the military on his watch, except for the 13 that died leaving Afghanistan, so their families were probably a bit hurt. And then the three that were killed by a drone just at the beginning of this year, so their families are also a bit hurt. So no is quite a, um, a definitive number, like zero, not mm. 16. And um, then uh, Biden says, oh, the Border Patrol staff, they support me. And in real time, the head of the Border Staff Union texts and says, we have never supported Joe Biden, nor ever will we. I think that might be a lie as well. <laughs> and I think the main watchers of the debate are likely to have been um, Russia, China, Venezuela, and thinking if the US is so weak, we might as well, because um, they would have watched that and they would have seen later that um, 65% think Trump won and, and then the 35 diehard Dems who are going to be Dems no matter what, no matter who, who you put up there, you can put up a, a sheep. A a sheep that's actually... <laughs> Yes, whatever, and I'd still vote for it. So, the, so that's the other thirty-five odd percent. But when these other powers look and think, well, that country's so we we might as well do what we're going to do, whatever it means, and before um, that we get a, a sensible guy back in there. I think the world is in a very precarious place after that debate. Do you think? Um I mean, that's absolutely certain. I mean, if I was uh, Vladimir Putin, I was looking at that guy thinking, well, I don't ever have to worry about any retaliation if, uh, you know, uh, from the United States if I go and, you know, do something extreme uh, because this guy's out to lunch uh, and, you know, he's supposedly the guy in, in, charge, of, uh, in charge of the nuclear uh, button. Uh, nothing to fear here. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you talk about precariousness, Olivia uh, said earlier in the show that uh, she thinks that Joe Biden is in a very precarious position because if they use the 25th Amendment to remove him, they're pretty much saying they've lied to us for the last six years about his mental abilities because these things don't just suddenly happen, right? They're, they're, it creeps up. Mm. All right? It's not a surprise to anyone who's associated with him. And also questions the fact of all these executive orders that he signed, was he fit and proper to sign those? Was was he all there when he signed those executive orders? And then, of course, Ooh. they've got the problem with many states have already voted in their primaries selecting Biden as the as the uh, nominee. Of course, that has to be ratified at the, at the Democratic National Conven Committee. But there's a chance that well, he just dies in his sleep. And they come out and they say, terribly yeah. sorry, um, America, we've got some bad news for you. Uh, President Biden has died in his sleep overnight. And this morning, uh, President Kamala Harris was sworn in uh, as per the Constitution. And the, then the fix is in. Ooh. And poor Joe shuffles off uh, with a state funeral, and that's the end of him. I think he is in a very precarious position if, the Biden um, family decide that he's not um, he's not going to retire because it's not financially convenient for them. But I think I think also when when you look at um, like Tucker Carlson was mentioning that what these folk do is whatever they accuse Trump of, they that's do. what they're doing. And so the easiest way to figure out what they're doing is to see what they're accusing folk of. And so when they all say so-and-so lied and so-and-so lied, that means we're lying. And when they're saying Russia, 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 well, they are the ones that um, did 
all sorts of dealings via their son, and they're saying he's 51 um, of the CIA saying that the the laptop is a hoax, and then they name them all, all these these high profile names. <laughs> well, they all those 51 have lied, so they're very keen to keep Joe in because it will be obvious when he's gone that they will be gone too. And so there's so many people in the gravy train of the Joe Biden um, campaign that will lose their jobs otherwise that are they're happy to do all these sorts of things. And now that I said there's been a ruling out saying that you can't really um, have a go at a previous president, um, even like they're saying oh, that because Trump, when, when they say that's an absolute ridiculous lie that Trump has said, so Trump may exaggerate about some things, but it's absolutely ridiculous bare-faced lies turn out to be true. So when they're saying um, that the, the Democrats are spying on him and his campaign, mm-hmm. and later on it's admitted that they're spying on his campaign because the, the, a number of things that have happened, and, and when he said it, it was just a horrendous lie. I mean, of course, people like Jack don't look at the second part of things. They don't hear the first part of the news where they say so and so lied, and so he must have. And um, like when they say um, Biden says he said he he was on a number six, he was on six handicap, and then <laughs> uh, Trump says, "Oh, he, I doubt that he could hit a ball fifty meters." Well, my understanding is um, four or five years ago he was on a six point eight handicap, but a six point eight handicap is not a six. It's a 6.8 handicap. It's nearer 7 than 6. And why have these guys got so much time they can get their handicap, handicap down to to that number if they're the leaders of the free world? You would have thought they'd be a bit busy. And now I see that they're saying things like, Joe Biden is able to work six hours a day. This is from Jill Biden. So anything that he does in that line has to be between 10 and 4. Well, the world doesn't have calamities to a timetable. So when the timetable says, um, you know, someone's done something stupid in, in another part of the world that requires the Americans to talk about it, I'm sorry, guys, it's not between 10 and 4. So the president can't look at that till tomorrow. I know. All right, Paul, I've got to take the next call. So thanks for calling Cam's Buddies, and we'll talk again next week. Bye for now. See you, bye. <laughs> Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Good to have you back. How are you, Cam? Long time no see. Well, you know, if you turned up to lunch on Monday, we might see you a bit more frequently. Well, I have the Zoom call I have to make to Australia just the same time. Well, I'd pain, sch- I know. I'd schedule it to another another time. Lunch is far more important. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah, Jack. It's not up to me, uh, unfortunately. Did you see the uh, presidential debate in the US on Friday? Oh, yes, I did. Oh, let me guess. You're a Joe Biden fan and you think he's, you know, wonderful. Well, to me, it was the fat, narcissistic, lying, thieving, criminal idiot versus geriatric ditherer. I mean, Trump didn't win, but Biden certainly lost. <laughs> I don't know. You must be watching a different debate. Um, but, you know, it's it's funny the perceptions that people have. But uh, I think that the world population saw in 90 minutes, a picture of Joe Biden that the political tragics amongst us already knew, but that the mainstream media had been keeping from us with, you know, 15-second clips, uh, you know, and then spending years telling us this guy is as sharp as a tack, he's uh, on top of his game, Um, he's the sharpest he's ever been, and, and ad nauseum over and over and over again, we're told that this guy is brilliant, and yet we saw 90 minutes of a sad, bewildered old man being taken advantage of by God knows who, but mostly his wife. I can't understand why the hell he wants to do it at his age. He's just think, not up to the task. Surely he knows that. I, I don't think he knows anything. Like He, he would seriously... Yes, I think you're right. <laughs> he, would, he would wake up in the morning, and even if he had um, air gall dripping down his chin and crumbs of toast left on the plate, he'd say to his wife, Jill, um, are you going to give me breakfast this morning? (laughs) I mean, that's what happens when you have advanced dementia. Look, I I know that that Paul and all you sycophants of Paul all love Donald Trump, even though he's a moron. But 
I'm not a Biden lover, um, but I'm certainly not a Trump fan. I can tell you that. Given the it's choice, between, really, knowing given, the choice. Yeah, given the choice between if you were a U.S. citizen and you had to vote in the next election, and you had a choice between yep. Donald Trump and Joe Biden, who are you going to vote for? Oh, definitely Biden, because really, yes, minister says it all. They don't probably watch it in America, but really, uh, he's not making any decisions. It's all made by the guys behind him, like a yes, minister. <laughs> and I think um, uh, Trump would be, um, it'd be, he's sort of like trying to overrule them. Biden would just go along with them. So oh. definitely Biden over Trump. I like, he's an idiot. I like rascals and scallywags, and uh, you know, no, nothing. Uh, I know you do. <laughs> nothing makes the uh, the swamp creatures of Washington more frightened than uh, seeing Donald Trump and his red flags uh, coming down the down the main road towards the White House. And and just for that reason alone, I would be I would vote for him. Also, I want the value of my. Oh. Trump signed hat to go up in value. So, yeah, I'll be voting for Donald Trump on that. Yeah, I can understand. And also, I suppose we have to think of the entertainment value. There hasn't been much entertainment lately on TV. At least when Trump's around, there's entertainment. Yeah, so that's why you vote for Winston Peters, endless entertainment, right? I mean, he's a rascal yes. and a scumbag. Uh, you know, earlier on the show today, I said to him, I've got a bone to pick with you, Winston. I said, uh, everybody I know uh, says don't vote for Winston Peters because you don't honour your promises. And I've seen the last couple of weeks a whole lot of promises being honoured, and I'm wor wondering if you're okay. <laughs> Winston's just a, uh, an enigma. He's doing a fantastic job out there at the moment, quite frankly, in my opinion. He is. He is indeed. I'm very pleased that I voted for Winston Peters. Yeah, me too. All right, Jack, uh, we'll talk again next week. Okay, see you later. See you, thanks. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. Good to have you back. Good to have you back, Cameron. There's a lot been happening, mate. What have you got your eyes on tonight? Ah, oh, look, we, can, we can't have a political show without discussing the US presidential debate between <laughs> Donald Trump and Joe Biden. The utter shit show. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it with just horror, to be honest. <laughs> Like you're a bit of a media maven, right? If you're a US citizen, you've been watching NBC News or CNN or Fox News for all these years under the Biden administration, you've been told that Joe Biden's as sharp as a tack, that he's in command, full command of his faculties. He's, he's uh, you know, conducts meetings brilliantly. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, he's all there and, and, and on top of all the topics and subjects. And then you watch that debate. Would you start feeling that maybe you'd been gaslit? Oh, hundred percent. And I actually know some American people who are just so beyond horrified, and they've typically been Democratic voters. You know, they're just normal sort of business people, and now they're just stuck. They just don't know what the hell to think. And the media has projected Biden. You know, and because I knew he was had weak faculties. Like we kind of all knew that, but not that bad. You know. Mm. So that was just an utter horror show. It's probably one of the worst political things I've ever seen. <laughs> and I actually thought that the, the muting made Trump seem more statesmanlike because he couldn't, you know, do his usual ranting and raving. He got silenced. Yeah, he could just sit there and, and just, they showed his picture next to Biden's. And, you know, when he was talking, um, Biden would have this vacant fly catching sort of. <laughs> With dead eyes, and all, you could almost see the dribble coming out the side of his mouth, couldn't you? He wasn't there at all. It's just, honestly, just it's just so horrendous of all the people in America, you know, the amazing, brilliant people, and to end up at this point with these two is just very bizarre. How, how come it's worked like that? How come? Like, is it the media? Well, the media are in on it. Absolutely. The media are in on it, and the Democrats have gaslit and lied to us about the frailty of Joe Biden. Jill Biden has pushed that as well. Uh, Barack Obama's in on it, uh, but you have to say they're all colluding together to paint this picture that uh, Donald Trump is unfit for office and Joe Biden is, you know, the best president they've ever had, and. It's all been lies. It's all been gaslighting of the electorate 
And I think we're going to see uh, a massive vote against the Democrats come November. Well, we better hope so. The, um, do you think they'll chuck Biden out and replace him? Well, I talked about that with Olivia, and it's quite difficult for them to chuck him out because many states have had, had their primaries. Uh, the Democratic National Committee meets in the, at the convention in August, so just a few weeks away, uh, where they'll have to confirm him and K- Kamala Harris as uh, the nominees. Uh, the only person who can remove Joe Biden from any of this is Joe Biden himself, who puts his hand up and says, uh, I'm done, I, I can't do this anymore. But Joe, Jill Biden and Hunter Biden aren't going to let him do that. Uh, and he's not capable of making a decision. As I just said to Jack you know, earlier, he's the kind of guy that he's sitting there uh, at the breakfast table with egg all over his face, crumbs on the plate, <laughs> And he says to Jill, are you going to give me breakfast yet? You know, that's how out to lunch he is. And they're not going to let that happen. So that leaves the Democrats with the 25th Amendment, which requires honesty from the vice president, to then go to Congress and say the president's unfit to carry on. That raises a whole lot of constitutional issues about executive orders that have been signed, uh, all of that sort of thing, because you can now question those executive orders and say, well, if he's out to lunch now, when he signed this one a week ago, was he out to lunch then? What about this one two weeks ago? Was he out to lunch then? At what point did he not have dementia? And that throws a whole lot of things. The only thing that's left then is for Joe Biden to quietly die in the middle of the night, and they announced that uh, Kamala Harris is now the President of the United States because, sadly, the aged and infirm Joe Biden uh, didn't wake up. Are you suggesting what I think you're suggesting? Yeah. Uh, reality, these, this is the intelligence, you know, swamp creatures. That's the sort of thing they'd do. I mean, it sounds farcical and crazy to even suggest it, but that's the reality that they're facing right now. How do we get rid of Joe? Yeah, I mean, and save face. They, yeah, well, they killed Kennedy, didn't they? <laughs> Let's not go there. Who knows? The... Um, <laughs> But the state of Biden on stage was, he, he can't be president. Like, when you start one answer and end up answering something else. I mean, it's. it's yeah. I mean, it was amazing watching Trump. They said, oh, President Trump, what do you think think about that? And he says, uh, I have no idea what he just said, and, um, neither, <laughs> and neither does he. He, does, he doesn't either. Yeah, he doesn't either. The, um, I saw a clip comparing Biden four years ago, and. He, he was much more astute four years ago. Like he really was answering with clarity and passion. It, something's happened. I don't, I don't know. We maybe the last two years, and then the media have just covered it up. I mean, we, we see the media around the world doing this, just covering up. Look like, at all these massive failings, and yet still hugely covered by the media. So it's it's not really an American problem. It's a, it's a Western problem, really. Yeah, well, while the Democrats have a problem with Joe Biden, I think a a bigger problem is that the American public have now found out that their media have been gaslighting them for God knows how many years. When people find out they've been gaslighting, they get really angry. And I think there's going to be a huge backlash against all these talking heads in, in the mainstream media who have been talking up Joe Biden like he's the new messiah. Uh, it's clearly not the case. Well, it needs to happen. And, you know, the trust in media is falling and it just continues to fall. And then we get stuff like this, bombshells. It's, we need a clean out. I see this week in New Zealand that the National is going to pass Labor's, what's, what's the, it's about the funding of the media from Facebook and Google. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought that. I thought, I thought, you know, hello, here we go. Here is errant stupidity being done by. Uh, national ministers, Paul Goldsmith, you know, ably supported by Willis, trying to pass a law to control companies that have more revenue than the New Zealand economy does and thinking that they're going to win. I mean, it just beggars belief that they think that they can do that. I mean, here's how it'll go. They'll go, oh, we've passed this law now, and uh, now Google and uh, Facebook 
and X, we invite you to sit down uh, so that we can work out some pricing for the news. And I'll just hear a click on the end of the phone as they hang up. <laughs> but, but isn't it fundamentally bottom? just subsidising one selling business with another good business? That's all that fundamentally they're forcing on them. And, and nobody's going to do it. You know, you, they're just not going to. They're not going to come to a meeting. They're not going to. No, no, they're just going to switch it off because New Zealand's revenue for those companies is rounding figures for them. So they'll just go. Yeah. I, I, well, my, my, we'll maybe we'll even switch it off in Canada. Didn't they? they did. They switched off Canada. They switched off Australia. Well, they had that work out. And here yeah. we are yet again, thinking that because we're New Do Zealand again, doing the same. But, yeah. It's just like Nationals camp in Britain, you know, like Labour but less shit. Yeah, but that's, that's my problem is why is National entertaining this stupid law and literally it's a stupid Labour law and, you know, subsidising bad businesses with good with good businesses. We need these businesses to change, innovate and find new ways to get revenue and not just be oh, propped up by false laws. You know, yeah. even yeah. though it won't work anyway, but I just thank God Axe stood up to it eh, and said, and did their well, agree what, to disagree. And what, what, what the government's trying to, what, what um, Paul Goldsmith is trying to say is the equivalent of saying to Henry Ford, look, you've really devastated the um, buggy whip manufacturers, uh, Mark. <laughs> and yeah. so therefore, um, we're going to now uh, put a tax on each tyre. On your Model T, to go to the buggy whips, which is going yeah. to subsidise the buggy whip manufacturers. I mean, exactly, it's exactly what's happened. So yeah. why is National entertaining it? Why have they been so shit? Well, it's because they don't. They don't if this is the problem with political parties that stand for nothing. It means they fall for anything, and they've fallen for Willie Jackson's stupid bill. And uh, you know, anyone who accuses me of being a national sycophant clearly doesn't listen to what I say. Oh, I just, <laughs> no. I, I think I like is, how you give both sides of Parliament. Ken. that's great. That's how all commentators should be. That's Hate right. both sides. If if a politician doesn't matter what colour uh, is on their rosette, whether it's blue, red, yellow, black, whatever, green, especially green or brown, if they do something stupid, I'm going to say you've done something stupid. And I think Paul Goldsmith and Christopher Luxon have screwed up. And they're going to find out that these big tech companies aren't magnanimously going to sit down and negotiate with oh, money. the New Zealand Herald. <laughs> you know. but, like honestly, the, the revenues for the New Zealand Herald will be less than the revenues for Google from New Zealand. That's going to hurt, because what it did in Canada hurt the small people, because they will get generating good revenue clicks off yep. social media. You know, like, yep. That's a problem. It's going to wipe out all the independence again. That's why you have. Is this why Melissa Lee got the sack? Because she wouldn't agree with it. Probably. And are they doing this to get try and soften the media to get a more sycophantic media? Dead right. You got it. Spot on. Luxon's carrying favour with the media, who are going to shit on him anyway. I mean, the guys are. They'll shit on him anyway. And the guys are moron. Anyway, uh, Jimmy, I think I better sign off and finish up the show. Uh, it's been a fantastic having you back, and we'll do this again next week. Thanks, Cam. Have a great day. Cheers, mate. Bye. You can always rely on my buddies for truth bombs, and we certainly heard some there about the Joe Biden and Donald Trump debate. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.